Thank you. Afternoon, everyone. Um, so, yeah, my name is Ian Stuppel. I'm the um, general manager of Waste Solutions for Auckland Council. Um, so, I'm just going to talk about our what we call a resource recovery network, um, and particularly around how it relates to encouraging social enterprise. Um, and it fits very much with our waste strategy. So Auckland's waste strategy was adopted six years ago. We're just going through a refresh now. Um, but it's, it sets its stall out for Auckland to be a world-class city. And, and clearly, environmental issues are, are core to that. Um, set a vision of zero waste by 2040. And very much a community-led approach. So a movement of change. Um, and, and sees very much waste as a resource. So you may have seen this before. Just that whole thing around, actually, if you just look at disposal costs, it's just a, a very small um, fraction of, of what the, the, the true cost of disposal is. And if you take into account the lost materials, the wasted wages or lost labour costs uh, and energy costs, um, it's probably about ten times the cost of disposal. And it's very relevant in Auckland where we have a very low waste levy. It's only $10 a tonne. So a tonne of, uh, of waste is landfill for about $50 a tonne. So we've, we've got six key projects um, that we've been following. The top three are a three-bin rollout system, user pays refuse, co-mingled recycling, and food waste collections. So Auckland is uh, one and a half million residents, so 550,000 properties. And then the bottom three are very much around behaviour change, community development, community engagement. Um, uh, the annual in organics is our bulky waste collection. Um, and the resource recovery network is um, is based on a, a, a based on a, a, a principle around trying to bring all recyclers, predominantly community recyclers, but any any businesses, um, uh, council operations, uh, community operators, into a network. So we're sharing information, sharing resources, focus on reuse and recycling, looking at local solutions for for the local issues. Um, but also about creating opportunities for local enterprise, local economic development, and that whole thing around jobs, training, volunteering, and seeing waste as an opportunity to, for, for people to, 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 to make a living, to, to create some wages. Council's role has predominantly been around community recycling centres, so setting up infrastructure um, that, um, that really acts as the, as the skeleton, the backbone, where we can trade off, off those sites. And we've currently got um, five sites operational, um, uh, and so we've, we've introduced uh, more than one a year. Um, predominantly council depots that have been um, changed into um, recycling sites. So uh, I'm just going to show a short video, actually, because these people are much better at telling the story than me. This site is the Devonport Community Recycling Centre. We take waste from the Devonport community and further afield across the North Shore. Essentially around diverting as much waste from landfill as we can and involving the community in that process. And we had a lot of social and environmental um, objectives and we also um, were really focused on employing people and um, helping people out of poverty and saw the waste industry as a great opportunity to do that, to upskill people and offer them valued work. So we started off with just three of us working here. We were all over on the landfill side, which was, was really good because it sort of gave us a, a good experience of you know, what was happening over there and um, you know, how it all worked on the ground up. Now we employ 10 people, um, five of those are full time and the others are job sharing in the, in the shop. I guess the best thing about this is we're not working in isolation, we're part of a network. We've had Waiuku open up, we were the second ones to, to sign a contract with Council. We've now got Devonport, Waitakere are doing some fantastic things as well. And we all come together and sit around the table. Um, and, and we share ideas and we share what's worked or what hasn't worked. I guess one of the most powerful things is when um, people come up here and they come up on this premise that they're not environmentalists or they don't really care what's happening and then they see what's happening over here at a gate 8, they see the amount of rubbish that comes into the site and they just can't help but to be affected by it. Um, and then they start asking the questions, you know, how can we change this, you know, what are the opportunities? 
the support from council that, you know, you'll come up with an idea, you'll write it as a proposal, you'll say, oh, I really want to give this a go, and they're like, oh, yeah, go for it, give it a go. And so that, that's the best part of the job for me is that, the, you know, there's not everything's not set in stone and we're all on a brave new journey here. So we're diverting waste from landfill and we're offering them something at a really good price, uh, but we're also letting them know that we're a charitable organisation and that in a partnership with the council, um, that's what really gets people feeling really positive towards sort of our job, I guess. Every time we sell something, we track the, the category of what it is and also the weight, so we then tally it up at the end of each week and just tallied up for last month and we did 13 tonnes in April and we turned that into $26,000 of sales. I would really love to see the day where this site here was responsible for the entire community waste stream um, and then I think things get really, really exciting. You're providing local employment, you're providing income and you're providing vibrancy into the economy of the community as well. Um, so that would be my long-term goal. So, so each site is different, um, uh, but predominantly they, they take waste in through uh, trailers, car loads, um, and currently the average recycling or recoverable rate is, is 70%. So <clears throat> the approach that we took for, for planning really the right outcomes was, was making sure that, that at the outset we, we didn't exclude anyone. This is very much around community, business, council working together, <clears throat> local boards, which are the local community elected areas. Um, we got them on side and, uh, and actually not surprisingly, um, they want lots of these, um, so we actually can't keep up with demand. One of the key things is, is, was also working across council, Auckland Council's pretty big council, but that internal collaboration, working with planners and finance team and resource consents was, was key so that we could do the right things on our sites. But also within the waste team, getting the right people, I think we realised that, that actually a lot, of, uh, a, a lot of staff are comfortable with the traditional waste collection and disposal contracts, but getting the right people working with the community sector, it's a different form of relationship and it's more of a partnership working side by side. We also did a lot of work in, in preparation for, before we went to market with tenders, um, <clears throat> about actually what did we want to do. We wanted to be best practice, but we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. There was, there was good models already out there across New Zealand, but also you know, in Australia and, and across the world. So learn from best practice, try and stimulate some innovation and ideas. We have a, a waste minimization and innovation fund where um, it's a contestable fund where um, people can apply for, for ideas and we've used that to support trials and support things like repair cafes and, and other ideas. We also have a mentoring and training program uh, which is delivered by the Zero Waste Network in New Zealand. Uh, and although that's focused predominantly on Auckland, the material that, uh, that we've developed, we've shared so that actually they, they, uh, they use that across the, across the country. So our partnering approach, I think I probably said earlier, we, we use this symbol as a, as a bike. We want to mobilise Aucklanders to get passionate about waste, to actually feel that they are in control and they can do something about it. And we're really at the back. The council is, <clears throat> we've got our priorities, leading the way, supporting, facilitating, but actually it's the community um, and our priorities should fit the community. The community are, are leading the way and our view is, is that the, we get the right operator, we get the right community groups, then they know what's best in that community. Um, so there's a whole range of other stuff that, that goes, goes alongside the community recycling centres. A lot of groups feed off the sites as well. So there's almost a mini network within, uh, w within particular areas. So Auckland is, is a, a, you know, a mix of, you've got urban Auckland, but there's a lot of rural areas, small town New Zealand, population of five to 10,000, where these sites work really well. So delivering the right outcomes, we, we, uh, we follow a procurement <coughs> approach based on social procurement. So um, clearly price is important, but it's actually, when we evaluate it, it's only around 25 to 30% of the actual evaluation criteria. What we're looking at is diversion rates, employment opportunities, volunteering, um, how, you, how, how well you c these groups are connected to the, to the local community, to the local politicians as well. Um, we look at a financially sustainable model, so uh, contracts are between five and seven years. 
there's some funding at the, at the front end, but actually by the end of the contract, there, there is no funding. And so, um, you know, we want to pay them a fair, fair wage, but uh, they need to work hard for their money. And what we find is that actually once these sites get up and running, um, they're generating revenue, they're hungry for other forms of, of, uh, of service offerings, and also additional funding comes in from a whole range of other sources as well. The, the sites they operate out of our council sites, so as part of that we work with the operators also to develop the sites um, throughout the term of the contract, uh, and we share the risk as well. So we have a, we have a profit share scheme, um, but also the operators can benefit from any other council contract rates that we may have for disposal or processing. So, um, so we're making savings as a council, uh, and so are they. Uh, and we work in collaboration, so there's ongoing support, and also there's the community recycling centres have, an, uh, have their own operators group as well, where they're sharing ideas so, uh, and they're trading material as well. Um, what, what we also have is our, is our bulky waste collection service, which is a, a, um, a two-truck two model collected on property where we, we collect uh, recoverable material. That goes back to a, to a warehouse, which looks something like this, where really good quality material um, is distributed by the, by the Zero Waste Network, but the community recycling centres have, have first, um, first, first picks of, of this material. So again, it goes back to the site, they can upcycle it, repair it, they've got the capacity, um, and it goes back into the community. So yeah, and, and in addition, there's a whole range of other community enterprises that are looking to uh, that focus predominantly on reuse and repair. Um, uh, so getting um, getting material back into um, into people's homes. The the bikes on the bottom left here is a good example where all these bikes have come from the inorganic collection, um, and then. Um, uh, this group, they, they teach young kids um, how to repair the bikes, but also road safety skills as well. So what does success look like for us? So clearly diverting waste from landfill. You know, historically this material would have probably gone to a transfer station um, and uh, ended up in landfill. <clears throat> Focus on reuse and repair, but also recycling. Creating local employment, so that's a key measure for us. Um, and local economic development, so how much of the, the, the spend is within um, uh, say a 10 kilometer radius using local businesses and local, um, local people. Um, so that community empowerment approach, so these, these groups are embedded, we, you know, we try and um, we have the vision that these sites are as valuable in the community as a library or a leisure center, and so people come here they, 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 they come and have a look around the shop and it's almost part of their daily routine. They feel connected to the site. Financial performance, as I said, we're looking at sustainable businesses. So, you know, a social enterprise is clearly a business with a, with a, with a, a, a so, social um, good aspect, but, but we want them to be business. We want to attract smart people to manage businesses and not looking for a handout from council um, for, for forever. And, and innovation as well, so get new ideas and then we share them across the network, but actually we share them across New Zealand as well, across the Zero Waste Network. So for us, I think we've got a good start. We've got five sites uh, and growing. We've got three, three that are currently in development. We've got three others that are trial on like, pop-up sites that we call them. Uh, for us, social procurement works. It's a, it's a different model for council, uh, but I think we've got some really good outcomes. <clears throat> in the early days, we were, we were very nervous about would we get the groups coming, um, but actually now with our capacity building, we, we've, we've, we've got almost people queuing up to, to wait for the next uh, tender to come along. We build a strong community sector who are very passionate about waste. Um, <coughs> We've got diversion rates of uh, an average of 70%, some of as high as 74%. These five sites are creating um, over 55 jobs, um, equivalent of around 32 F full-time equivalents. Uh, and that doesn't include all, this, all the, um, the add-ons. So if you look at the TVs, they go off, off for um, dismantling to a group called Abilities, whose focus is on um, employing people with disabilities. Um, and through the community recycling centres and the inorganics project has created 12, 12 uh, full-time jobs. 
Uh, I think the key thing for us is also it just recognises the great work of Auckland communities around, um, you know, seeing waste and, and actually they're leading the way. And I think um, for, for, for us, um, I would say it's out of control, but, but actually we're learning from them all the, all the time about um, what they can do with, with waste and their ideas. So that's it for me. Thanks very much for listening.